here we are. My Colt 45 is already set up onto uh, CL600. Um, running with the LED, we'll do a flash test in a little bit. But again, I want to show the pattern. So, as you can see, we have a complete round circle. This is my illumination spot. When this flash goes off, this is my illumination. This is my distance. My model can stick her hands all the way out from end to end, and she's fully illuminated. Again, the modifier is pointed at my sternum area, kind of, and basically this is the pattern that's going up, this is the pattern that's going down. If I lower the light and bring the light down through here, then of course this is going to come down and be near my head, and then my feet are going to be fully illuminated. Again, there's a difference. You can see where this pattern is going to start dropping off from where I'm standing up against this wall or this backdrop. So just so you know, this is what the pattern is going to look like. Now I'm going to switch over to a 7-inch reflector. All right. You can see the pattern completely different. I'm going to have a hot spot right in this area, and it's going to start feathering out, and I'm going to start losing f-stops through here. It's going to be fall off. That's the way it's supposed to be built. That's the way a seven inch reflector is. Again, I'm shooting at the, this Colt 45, or I mean this seven inch reflector is right up near me. It's about, let's see. It's a little over six feet away. So the six feet away from what the Colt 45, six feet away with the seven inch reflector. I'm not changing the distance. Now let's take it and go to a five inch reflector. And again, you can see the pattern is completely different. So it, this LED is pretty much telling me exactly what this flash pattern is going to be. See, now without it, let's put a 5-inch reflector on there. Again, you can see our hot spots right here. And it's feathering off all the way out. Now you don't even really see a round pattern like you did with the Colt 45, because here's our hot spot right in this area. Now, when people sit there and turn around and meter with the seven inch reflector, the Colt 45 and the five inch reflector, they're metering usually from the center. Again, you also need to figure out that there is a difference between this hot spot here in the center and the fall off out here and out this way and up this way and down this way. This is the difference between the Colt 45, a seven inch reflector and a five inch reflector. People are not understanding there is a pattern. So as you can see, this five inch reflector is throwing a big old, you know, again, our hot spots right here. Now I'm gonna go back to the seven inch reflector. Again, here's our seven inch reflector. This is our hot spot with that seven inch reflector. It's right here. The five inch was a little bit bigger. The seven inch is right here. But the difference between fall off between the five inch reflector and the seven inch reflector is completely different pattern. You can actually see a ring on this one where you can't see it on the five inch reflector. And again, this is our hot spot right here. So when you meter, Everybody always meters right there. You need a meter here, down, side to side. Understand what the Colt 45 is doing in a seven inch reflector and a five inch reflector. Now if we go to the Colt 45, here you can see our pattern. This is the pattern that you wanna see when you're using a reflector. Because I'm gonna be evenly lit from hand to hand from head down to basically where my knees are at unless I lower the Colt 45. If I lower the Colt 45, I'm going to get uh, less of a fall off at the knee area and I'm just going to be more illuminated um, evenly all the way down. 
Again, so I'm gonna come back and then we're gonna do um, the meter test. So I want people to understand the difference in the pattern. So this is why we went the LED first and then we'll go with the pattern from the uh, uh, strobe. All right, now we're back. Here we have it bare bolt, the 600 bare bolt. You can see it in the video. I didn't change anything. It's in the exact same position as it was before. But now we're going to do a meter test. So let me go over here and grab my meter. So here's my meter. Here's my trigger. Let's turn this baby to one to one power. And we're at six feet. Let me meter from right here in the center. That's at 14. Let's meter out here to the side. F13. Meter up here at the top. That's F14. Let's meter over here to the side. That's F13. Let's meter down below. That's F14. There we go. So bare bulb, nothing, no modifier on it. Basically, roughly F14. Let's start off with a 5 inch reflector. And again, I'm using the same unit. Again, with, if I'm using a 360, I have to make sure it's the same distance every single time I do a, modif uh, a test. Even with the 8200, I have to be, the bulb distance has to be exactly the same, or why even do the test? Again, this is the reason why I'm using the 600, because the Pole placement's never going to change, as well as the um, the stand. Everything else is is not going to move. It's all in the same spot. So let's read with this five-inch reflector. So right dead in center. I keep hitting the select button instead of the fire button. We have F18. Let's remeter up here again. We have F18 meter out to the side here. We have F20. Wow. Let's meter over here. We have F20. Let's meter down here. We have F20. We meter in this again in the center. It's F18. Why is it F18 dead center and it's F20 out here on the sides? The reason why is because the bare bulb of the 600 throws a donut pattern. There is a, a stop, a couple stops difference right in the center compared to if I was using the old CL600. And I've tried to explain that before, but there is a different light pattern from the 600 versus the old 600. So let's go over and put on the 7 inch reflector. So up high, F20 and side to side, F20. Let's go with this again. We'll start out here again, right dead center. I can't get to hitting the select button, I need to stop doing that. F29, up here at the top. F25. Wow. Let's go to the side. Make sure I'm not blocking the light. F22. Let's go over this side. F25. Again, I'm not specifically putting it in the same spot every single time, so it's going to be a little different. F25. Let me meter this one again over here and let me stand to this side and stay out of the light pattern. Okay, F25. So it's F25. So now we went from a 5 inch reflector, what well was F20, to a 7 inch reflector that was F25. And let me read the center again. I want to test that. So it's somewhere right in there. And it's F29. The concentration is forcing with a 7 inch reflector forcing the light in this way, into a cone point where the five inch isn't. So, again, now it's getting rid of that donut pattern that I was talking about earlier. 
because again, there's a donut pattern. So now we're going to go to the Colt 45. Again, you're not going to get a Colt 45 that looks like this. This one's mine. So just so you know, this is my Colt 45. All right, let's meet it from the center. So somewhere, make sure I'm in the center. Wow, F51. Let me meet her out from this. Let me go to this side here because again, it threw it off that last time. F20 because I'm outside the circle. Remember, the circle is right over here, and it's not out here. So let's go in a little bit closer. F32. Let's go over here. F32. F36. Make sure I'm not pressing. Let me go this way. F36. So, again, let's measure the right dead center again. And pretty darn close right there. F51 again. So, with the reflector coning and shaping that light, now from the 5 inch reflector, it went to a hotter hot spot in the center than the outside. Then up here, then down here, then over here. Again, this circle of light, when I move it back further, again, there's a difference, I should say, with the LED and the bulb. If I move it back further, I'm going to get a, more of a circle. So I'm going to slide that back just a little bit. So instead of six feet, now we're going to be roughly around eight feet. There we go. Somewhere close. Let's meet her again right ahead center. All right, so right about there. F40. Get set there. F29. 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 Hot spot. Let me see. F F40. Just a little bit higher. F36. Just a little bit lower. F40. We measure down a little bit forth. F36. So right here in this little spot. So I move it right here. Should be F40. F40. F40 right here. F40, F36, F40 is right here, F40, F40 right here, yep, okay, as you can tell, the flash on this is hot right in this spot, but I'm still getting good illumination right up here at F36. F36. Alright, let's see. F36. Move back. F36. That's what I like. That's what I like to see. F36. Of course, I'm blind, but I can read a lot here. Again, so it's F36. All the way around out here. It's F40 right here. Now, when I use the CL600, the old version, the light pattern is completely different. I get the same F-stop from this side, from this side, from here, and from here. And the reason why is because it's a round cylinder flash tube, not a bare bolt tube. And it's also firing straight forward and not out the sides like the 600. Um, I should probably uh, waste time. Um, but again, there is the pattern of the Colt 45, the output reading of the Colt 45 versus the 7-inch reflector. And again, let's read the center. 
Let's do this again. I'm going to read dead center. So we're going to put it right there. And F40. Let's go to the 7 inch reflector. Let's meet it right dead center. F25. Let me hit that one more time just to make sure. F25. Let's go to the 5 inch reflector. Again, this is one to one power. This is not half power. This is not three quarter power. This is not. Let me line that up. So somewhere right there. F16. Let me try it one more time just to make sure it's, the bulb is fully recycled. F16. There you go. The ins and outs between a 5 inch reflector, 7 inch reflector, and the Colt 45. Again, it's all based on the bulb. So, since the bulb in the 600 is pushed back further and I throw the extension tube on it, it changes. Again, because it brings the flash bulb out further past the inside cone <coughs> part of the reflector. <coughs> so therefore, it gets a hotter spot here. The 5 inch reflector is forcing light out further out this way. The 7 inch reflector hones it in more. And then the Colt 45 hones it in more. So therefore, that's the reason why the longer distance on each one of these reflectors between the 5 inch, the 7 inch, and the uh, Colt 45. Hopefully that helps you out in understanding the Colt 45, the 7 inch reflector, and the 5 inch reflector. Again, I could do this with the 360 and I can do this with the 200, but guess what? Do that on your own. I'm just explaining the Colt 45 and the difference between the 7 inch reflector and the 5 inch reflector. My name is Scott with Sean Photography and thank you for watching. Hello. Okay, we just got done doing the video explaining the Colt 45, the 7 inch reflector, the 5 inch reflector. A lot of people always ask why is there not a grid for the Colt 45? Again, why would you want to go buy a grid set? Because there, you'll see some on the internet that come with a grid. Again, they're different, not the exact same as the Colt 45 that Edward sells. Again, so you might get a different output level on those other ones. Again, I can only test for the ones that are sold by Cheetah Stand. But when you get a, one of those grids, it's a 60 inch grid. And why would you put a 60 inch grid onto a 45 degree reflector? It's, it's, it's kind of stupid. Again, the Colt 45, the closer it is, the faster the light fall off. Again, if you know your inverse square law, you'll understand this. If you don't, then you need to look it up. If you need a, a grid onto something, then I would put it on the seven inch reflector. You've seen how the seven inch reflector, the five inch reflector, and the Colt 45 laid out onto the screen. Again, if you're gonna use a grid set, I would just use a seven inch reflector. It's smaller, compact, and you can get in closer and taking up less space than the Colt 45. Uh, the Colt 45 does come with a color corrected uh, shower cap, if, you, that's, if that's what you want to call it. Um, so most other ones that you see online do not come with a shower cap, but Edward does have the color corrected shower cap that fits on the end. It does soften up the light a little bit, but it's not a lot. Just so you know um, if you're in really really close again if you watch the other videos if you're in really really close you're gonna get nice soft light but the light fall off is gonna be so f fast and dramatic and putting a sock on you're gonna stop it down by another half a stop so just so you know when using the shower cap you're gonna lose about a half a stop of power due to the fact of the shower cap again there's other ones out there like the Colt 45 but I can only speak for Edwards, not the other people's. 
Can't speak for the Pro Photo version. Can't speak for the Braun Color version. I can speak for the Elechrome Maxi Light, which is a 16 inch reflector compared to a 12 inch reflector. Basically 12, it's 11.9, something like that. Close enough to 12. Um, so I can explain both of those. They actually do the exact same thing. It's just with the 16 inch reflector, the circle of light becomes bigger compared to the Colt 45. Again, if I want a bigger circle of light, all I do is move it back. Yes, you lose some power, but the thing is, is if you know the, your exposure triangle and your inverse square law and everything you need to know about your camera, you can figure it out on how to get that to work the way you want it to work. Again, my name is Scott with Sean's Photography. Thank you for watching.